So welcome, welcome to a voice from heaven beyond the body. And uh, this is chapter 19 of the Ur text of A Course in Miracles. So this, this chapter has this title and the blue book, it's different. I forgot how, but since I'm using the Ur text to at least once go through the chapters and, and really get, get to it, so to speak, uh, to the depth of it. Um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing discovery so far. So we're starting today with the introduction. The, the, the chapter is fresh, you could say. It's like we never read this. We never took a look at it. It's brand new. It was just it's like just put on the table. It's just ready for us to be heard. And um, that's an amazing thing. So you're, you're part of the premiere of um, discovering chapter 19 beyond the body so and that's an interesting idea of course since we have identified ourselves as bodies walking around on a planet called earth and having a certain age and all this and seeing that we go beyond that now in this chapter we're taking a look at so what is what is that what what is next what is Say what's beyond the body. Um, so it's really interesting. So the body so far has kept us pretty busy um, in reproducing, uh, to mention one. <laughs> reproducing, uh, representing ourselves with it. Um, yeah, suffering with it, maybe. Um, yeah, annihilating it. Um, yeah, well, that's about it. And, um, yeah, that was very mechanical. You could say it was very much into the form. It was very much related to the form, using the form. And you can only, say, use and misuse it, abuse it, if, if you recognize the form as something. So the first requirement would be to, to uh, identify with it. Otherwise, you have nothing to, to work with, so to speak. So it's like it's impossible for a mind to attack, but uh, a body seems to be able to do that, and and that's that's not the truth of you. That's also the occurrence in itself is in fantasy, and um, that's why it's so great to take a look at this in this chapter. So you can say like the the chapter is uh, preparing us to take a deep look at sin and guilt, at faith and faithlessness, um, and obstacles to peace. And in fact, we say, walk through all the um, aspects of fear, fear of God, to mention one. And the other one is um, afraid, you could say, to lose the body because you think it has value. That's another one. That's a big one too. So there's, say, plenty and, and incredible opportunities for healing. And that's why it's so great to, to use this chapter and to use this, uh, you could say, investigation, this discovery to, to, to see um, beyond the body and not let yourself be limited in any way by it. And that's a very lovely idea. Uh, amazing lovely idea in a world that is completely say limited by bodies and its abuse its suffering its wars its attacks um, so this is a totally lovely offering of peace for you um, coming from out of time uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth out of body, out of time, resurrected mind, speaking to us directly uh, to, to give us the message, like, whatever you think you're doing there, this is, this is over, this is gone. Um, yeah, why waste any more time suffering? Why would you? And so the alternative to that, is also being emphasized and, in fact, um, yeah, offered to you in every part of 
in the Course in Miracles, but especially also in chapter 19, Beyond the Body, because this is this is a pre yeah it's a requisite to 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 say go for the alternative, for your single desire for the Father, for that what is true about you to come to know yourself or to step deeply into the identification with the source that created you. So that's so huge and so beautiful. It's unbelievable. This is the introduction. Um, so we are actually first starting to get our minds ready, like to, to come into some kind of Oh, wow, uh, this is an opportunity to, to heal right here, right now, not some other time. No, we're going to release some ideas here. And you're going to be helped with that by the review of, uh, say, lesson 16 to 21 or something. Um, the review lessons are literally like made for the release, for, for letting go of ideas, concerns and all this and misperceptions and yeah, you, you know it. So lesson 16. I have no neutral thoughts. Neutral thoughts are impossible because all thoughts have power. They will either make a false world or lead me to the real one. But thoughts cannot be without effects. As the world I see arises from my thinking errors, so will the real world rise before my eyes as I let my errors be corrected. My thoughts cannot be neither true nor false, they must be one or the other. What I see shows me which they are. What I see, oh, I see no neutral things. What I see witnesses to what I think. If I did not think, I would not exist, because life is thought. Let me look on the world as the representation of my own state of mind. I know that my state of mind can change. And so I also know that the world I see can change as well. I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. If I have no private thoughts, I cannot see a private world. Even the mad idea of separation had to be shared before it could form the basis of the world I see. Yet that sharing was a sharing of nothing. I can also call upon my real thoughts, which share everything with everybody. As my thoughts of separation call to the, thoughts, call to the separation thoughts of others, so my real thoughts awaken the real thoughts in them. And the world my real thoughts show me will dawn on my side as well as thine, as well as theirs. Ah, I'm doing this again. And the world my real thoughts show me will dawn on their side as well as mine. I'm not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts. I'm alone in nothing. Everything I think or say or do touches all the universe. A son of God cannot think or speak or act in vain. He cannot be alone in anything. It is therefore in my power to change every mind along with mine, for mine is the power of God. I am determined to see. Recognizing the shared nature of my thoughts, I am determined to see. I would look upon the witnesses that show me the thinking of the world has been changed. I would behold the proof that what has been done through me has enabled love to replace fear, laughter to replace weeping, and abundance to replace loss. I would look upon the real world and let it teach me that my will and the will of God are one. Ah, so that is just amazing. It's like I'm determined to see. That's in fact what I have to keep in mind. I'm determined to see. I'm determined to see things differently. You know, I, I know this world and I know how it looks. But now there's a different way to look at it. I want to, I'm determined to see that. And this is really lovely. All right, so we start with uh, the Ortex chapter 19, Beyond the Body, with the introduction. So I'm going to do some reading and um, say stop along the way if necessary because 
the reading of it is actually revealing a lot beyond the body. A voice from heaven beyond the body. Oh yeah, here it is. We said before that when a situation has been dedicated wholly to truth, peace is inevitable. Its attainment is the criterion by which the wholeness of the dedication can be safely assumed. But we also said that peace without faith will never be attained. For what is wholly dedicated to truth as its only goal is brought to truth by faith. Now this is in fact the first time we really hear the word faith in our uh, meeting. Because faith we don't use that much. But actually here it will come and it will you say, come into an understanding for you that it totally makes sense. I'll repeat this once more. We said before that when a situation has been dedicated to truth, the peace is inevitable. Well, you can easily accept that. Its attainment is the criterion by which the wholeness of the dedication can be safely assumed. But we also said that peace without faith will never be attained. For what is wholly dedicated to truth as its only goal is brought to truth by faith. Now that is interesting. So we're going to, to go deeper into that. This, is, this faith encompasses everyone involved. This faith encompasses everyone involved. For only thus the situation is perceived as meaningful and as whole. And everyone must be involved in it or else your faith is limited and your dedication incomplete. Now what is, why is that so important? <laughs> so we just read this. Uh, I'm determined to see, right? I'm determined to see, but what do I want to see? I want to see with Christ's vision. Now, what is Christ's vision? You could say that's a vision looking uh, in equality, in unity, including everyone in. So it is not like, well, those guys or this or that, like that something outside yourself is not included in it. That would be the greatest mistake. You could say um, to come into truth, true perception, you cannot make exceptions. So it's, it's either true or it isn't. It is whole or it is not. Like it is, this you have to keep in mind. One exception, it says in the beginning of the Course too. one exception held apart from true perception makes its accomplishments anywhere impossible. So that's why it's good to completely include it in. And you can see that um, peace, you know, peace has to be whole to be peace. And there's not a little bit of peace. There's not a temporary peace or an yeah, agreement on peace. No, peace is whole. It's all inclusive. It can, cannot exclude anything. Otherwise, it is in conflict. Peace cannot be in conflict. It, it is whole or it is not. Now that is really important. Oh, yeah, that's a great discovery, in fact. So that also <coughs> say helps you to see that you have no idea how to attain it. You have no idea how to do it, so to speak, how to come to peace. Because the thing is that you don't know what will bring peace to everyone included. There's literally something you cannot do. Like you wouldn't know what's the best for everyone, how how you could bring about peace in all, like as a totality, in all your affairs. You would not know how to do that. So that's really good to recognize too, because then you can in fact receive it instead of in, instead of trying to bring peace or something. I don't know. 
so that is not a limit but it it will give you the ideas like no the situation wholly seen like wholly dedicated to truth any kind of occurrence wholly dedicated to truth will bring peace now how can i possibly wholly dedicate it to truth of course i can be determined and i can ask for help because then it can come to me because i wouldn't know how to do this you know so that's all good now you can see that faith comes in now what is this faith part then this is exactly the part that we're talking about so it's like there's a situation you want to dedicate it wholly to truth and you know like you trust you have faith that truth will answer that peace will come like there's faith connected to it there's a step that you take it's like a blind faith that you take and and it's inevitable like you you will have to do that so it can come to you but first you take a step into the unknown you could say on based on pure faith and so it's like there's a god and this god is gonna come to me some way i don't know how i don't know how to do that but he can he will come to me i have faith in that now you see how important that is and how you actually also have used that already like you have used this to to come into different experiences than your human experience you have used faith there must be something else i don't know what it is but there must be something else and that can come to me in this moment that will be given to me in the time that i can receive it like i have total faith in that 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 will happen but see but there's an, a step or like an act of faith in it that's why that's so important to to recognize or it's it's like all these steps are just being say put in your awareness and uh, to 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 make you aware of the fact that that is actually an occurrence in you that you actually are doing that this faith encompasses everyone involved for only thus the situation is perceived as meaningful and as whole whole see it's it's capitalized whole everyone involved and whole and everyone must be involved in it or else your faith is limited no it's like no this is universal it is whole it cannot be incomplete the faith encompasses everyone every situation properly perceived it becomes an opportunity to heal the son of god and he is healed because you offered faith to him giving him to the holy spirit and releasing him from every demand your ego would make of him not his ego your ego would make of him every situation properly perceived becomes an opportunity to heal the son of god and he is healed because you offered faith to him giving him to the holy spirit and releasing him from every demand your ego would make of him thus do you see him free you see him free and in this vision does the holy spirit share so it's like you start to see with christ's vision to your brother recognizing the wholeness and the absolute christ in him and in this vision does the holy spirit share so then suddenly the transition you could say from spiritual vision into knowledge is right there and since he shares it he has given it and so he healed through you it is this joining him in a united purpose that makes this purpose real because you make it whole and this is healing to make whole is to heal to make whole is to heal the body is healed because you came without it 
and join the mind in which all healing rests. Like the body is healed because you came without it, you had total faith in going beyond it. And join the mind in which all healing rests. So it's like the mind of God. You, you came without, the body is healed because you came without it and joined the mind in which all healing rests. So here we go again. It is this joining him in a united purpose, like a unified purpose, that makes this purpose real because you make it whole. And this is healing. The body cannot heal because it cannot make itself sick. It needs no healing. The body needs no healing. The body needs no healing. The body cannot heal because it cannot make itself sick. Its health and sickness depends entirely on how the mind perceives it. And the purpose which the mind would use it for so it's like its health and sickness depends entirely on how the mind perceives it and the purpose which the mind would use it for the body thus becomes an instrument of illusion acting accordingly seeing what is not there hearing what truth have has never said and behaving insanely being imprisoned by insanity wow i never read this wow this is so great the body thus becomes the instrument of illusion acting accordingly as an instrument of illusion seeing what is not there you see what is not there you call it sickness you see what is not there hearing what truth has never said and behaving insanely being imprisoned by insanity my God, it's so great. Do not overlook our earlier statement that faithlessness leads straight to illusions. For faithlessness is the perception of a brother as a body. That's faithlessness is the perception of a, seeing a brother as a body. And the body cannot be used for purposes of union. The body cannot be used as purposes for purposes of union. If then you see him as a body, you have established a condition in which uniting with him becomes impossible. See, this is so clear as day that you say, we'll start accepting this. You will start to recognize, oh yeah, wow my god i can't believe this like wow if then you see him as a body if you see him as a body like this is the same if you see a problem your mind is engaged in trying to find a solution if you see him as a body you have established a, a condition in which uniting with him becomes impossible now if that isn't an obstacle to peace then what is your faithlessness to him has separated you from him Wow, and kept you both apart from being healed. Your faithlessness has thus opposed the Holy Spirit's purpose and brought illusions centered on the body to stand between you. And the body will seem to be sick, for you have made of it an enemy of healing, quote-unquote enemy of healing, and the opposite of truth an illusion so i'm determined to see you know that's why we uh, read it too it's like my real thoughts will awaken the real thoughts in them in my brothers my real thoughts will like literally give awaken the real thoughts in them well here's one Faithlessness would always limit an attack. Faith would remove all limitations and make whole. 
faithlessness would destroy and separate. Faith would unite and heal. Faithlessness would interpose illusions between the Son of God and His Creator. Faith would remove all obstacles that seem to rise between them. Faithlessness is wholly dedicated to illusions. Faith wholly to truth. Well, it's like a checklist almost. Faithlessness would always limit an attack. Faith would remove all limitations and make whole. Faithlessness would destroy and separate. Faith would unite and heal. Faithlessness would interpose illusions between the Son of God and His Creator. Faith would remove all obstacles that seem to rise between them. Faithlessness is wholly dedicated to illusions. Faith wholly to truth. Oh, I love it. How beautiful. Ah, partial dedication is impossible. Truth is the absence of illusion. Illusion, the absence of truth. This is exactly what we read in the review too. Like truth is the absence of illusions. Illusions are the absence of truth. So partial dedication is not possible, it's impossible. Both cannot be together, nor perceived in the same place. To dedicate yourself to both is to set up a goal forever impossible to attain, for part of it is sought through the body, thought of as a means for seeking out reality through attack. Okay, so this is a bit like the warming up for chapter 19. It's amazing. So there's a lot of faith, faithlessness, comparison, you could say, because it needs to be crystal clear what what it entails and how valuable faith is it's like faith is <clears throat> in fact trusting that the power of god will will present itself like it's omnipotent faith is your investment you could say in omnipotence is is giving you the opportunity to trust what's going on to not try to um, say hold on to the human vision of uh, body limitation thinking that bodies can be sick thinking that the body does something and and here's like no 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 none of that is so so in my faith that it isn't so um, healing can take place and I can share that with my brother uniting within him in the same purpose as it's being said here and like this is exactly what what healing is about you know it's like the see you for one thing you could say like the son of god the son of god doesn't need healing the christ does not need healing so the awareness of your christ um yeah your christ vision like your christ awareness doesn't need some help you know does need some help so it's like that's an and development you could say that's a development because it needs to be total in your awareness and not partial so that's where you where the help comes in like you need you need that to practice that you could say to come to accepting it as a whole to come into the wholeness of your own being and so that's why we say this as like the son of god in one of the first expressions we referred to the one that needs healing as the son of god and that is like of course that is you like in your true being that is what you are you are the son of god in order to come to the full recognition and the total embrace of that um, it's like yeah the, uh, healing needs to take place that's essential so this like i said is the warming up for chapter 19 so we continue on with chapter 19 in the next couple of weeks and 
um, go through the obstacles to peace you can see now that we're being prepared you could say in taking another look at um, obstacles that's one thing but also taking another look at the body and um, so the origin of the body will come up too it's like what is it um, what is sin what is guilt what is the perceived purpose of sickness you could say what is the perceived purpose of sickness why is it there so it's a very much like a mir miraculous healing chapter that's why it's so great to share it with you um all right so one other ingredient is that we listen to master teacher and expanding the holy instant and that's exactly what we're doing right now that creates what time you're saying to me i can be a female all right and i can engender a form of reality based on gathering together in the karma in the evolutionary process and reproduce myself in increasing dimensions ah but whence comes the power from the soul from the sun i'm doing so there from god of course now what happens to a human being is what's it where you're evolved in the chaotic association is you're meeting yourself coming and going all right this is the only place in the position of space-time where you're nuts why you don't know who you are because you're feeling the insertion of the power coming for emanating from the source and it is causing conflict with your associations that you emanate from the female the evil the esha what you call the elohim the seven centers the seven sisters the pleiades in the beginning god created heaven and earth that's seven females isn't it okay the requirement then is what that you activate your female which is your potential through the utilization of the power of god or the light source shushum here we go Shushum, here's your Ida and Pingala, what you call your yin and your yang, and you're meeting yourself halfway and your mind is split. Why? This appears to be your source. What has to occur to you? You need to activate all of the memories contained, contained in your genetic association. Why? There's no such thing as time. Okay, the moment that time was thought of, it was totally fulfilled. It went from what? This black hole, this impacted consciousness association into the bright light of your reality. And that's what's happening to you. That's why there's no gender in the course. It has nothing to do with sexual male, female. It's not what we're talking about. Need the, need the female become a virgin to be pregnant. That's the whole story of the birth of the Christ. The Holy Spirit impregnates the female who previously was Magdalene, the whore, who was out whoring. She now becomes pure by the assertion of her, of her virginity, okay, the truth of her by bringing her resolve together to become whole, to become innocent, and is immediately impregnated uh, by the light of God. Is this too esoteric? All awakenings are female. My awakening is very female. Uh, literally okay uh, <laughs> the problem that a male consciousness have has in his own relationship is that he's in competition with his father did you know that this is pure course now for a minute he actually thinks he's the male thinks that he's usurped the power of his own creator Oedipus Rex sort of he's gonna marry his mother that gets into a little stuff but what we're saying is that the necessity for the awakening of a constabulary of unreality as constituted in the body requires the emergence of the female. In my awakening, I became very female. Would you like to hear that? My breasts swell up. What? I am going through, it's, in order to be impregnated, I am taking all of the thought forms that are part of my genetic association. Okay? And there are a lot of people who will demonstrate to you the passions, a males particularly, who undergo enlightenment will tell you that it was very much the passion of being loved by God. That's what happened to me. Now, those of you who are female must do what? Stimulate, okay, through the bringing together of your female associations, the recognition of the male in you. I don't care where you're hearing this. 
I'm giving you fact here, not in gender, but in the necessity for you to take time, which is the potential, which is the memory of you, which is your I Chang, isn't it? Contained within you and totally activate to make it whole. And that's what's happening to you. Okay. And that's what did happen to you. Be happy about that. Okay. As long as you associate with the thought forms okay, of your evil, of your Eve, all right, you'll remain in this association and continue to miscreate by your definition of yourself as what? Adam and Eve. See, the product of Adam and Eve as separate gender can only be death because it's associated with time. And you left the garden, which was eternity, didn't you? And became that. So that'll make you feel real good because a lot of you want to marry God. You, you feel the thrust of your passion to come up into this, this new you that's up in here. And that's what I want you to do. Let that happen. Let, understand that your body is undergoing these changes glandularly, okay? Utilizing the, the glands, the churches, the chakras in your body. Is that all right for you to know that? <coughs> did you know that? Sure. Sure. Where did you, where did the human condition come from? It came from the pancreas, which is the ductless gland, which is the Pleiades. It's the, the seven sisters, isn't it? All of the esoteric teachings of the physical body associations are to give you a recognition that you are participating in your own awakening. And if you can get this, it'll be very, very valuable to you. Nothing is separate from you. All of the reality that there is in the whole universe is right here in this room right now. There is nothing outside of this. I know that may seem startling to you, but you can only have one thought at a time. And when you have that thought, that's all that there is. Okay? Now, it seems as though you're undergoing this for the first time, but actually we've done this before. These deja vus that you're experiencing, this recognition suddenly that things are getting brighter, that they seem wholer to you, are what? The coming together, the fulfillment of your potential, leaving not unresolved the conditions that caused you to die back down into yourself. You're emerging from what? The tomb. You're emerging from the tomb of earth. Your temple is rent by the fire of reality and you're springing forth. <clears throat> How long does it take you to do that? Three days. You have descended into hell. Okay. You must remain in hell for one day and then you return. This is the, the, the certainty there's no such thing as two. You can't come down into hell, the idea of a schism, without having been there. That's why there's no such number as two. Wherever two or more are gathered, I will be there as the resolution to the two. Okay. But Jesus, when he's crucified, what? He descends into hell, and the third day he rises up. One day to get there, one day to recognize his plight, and one day to go out. The teachings that I'm directing to you, that that, that in occurred instantaneously. And that really you're just living within that framework of time and that it's actually already all gone. Isn't that nice to know that this is all over? What was I? Oh, wait a minute. I got off there for a minute. Where was I? Oh, yes. Lesson 158. Well, that didn't sound very much like Lesson 158. <laughs> well, it was. I'm going to finish it. <laughs> For we but see the journey from the point at which it ended, looking back on it, and this is what I'm encouraging you to do with me. Imagining we make it once again, reviewing mentally what has gone by. Listen. A teacher does not give experience because he did not learn it. What happened to me wasn't learned. Are you kidding? 
There's no possibility what occurred to me could have been learned. I can't give you the experience of my revelation. What can I do? It revealed itself to him at its appointed time, but vision is his gift. This he can give directly, for Christ's knowledge is not lost because he has a vision. He can give it to anyone who asks. The Father's will and His are joined in knowledge, yet there is a vision which the Spirit sees because the mind of Christ beholds it too. This is the same idea as your projections are becoming real to you now through the whole-mindedness that you're coming into. If you, want to, you might want to look at it this way. Everything that you're seeing about you here is a vision, okay? It's a projection of the light forms of your association. What, you're do what we're doing now is giving you enhanced vision. You're better able to see because you're not in conflict with your own thought form association. Am I, can we do this from this energy source? That's what's happening to you. Yeah. Is that what a savior is? That's precisely and exactly what a master is, what a savior is. You, what you actually do is you stay in association with him if you'd like to know. Okay, I can't teach you. I can only demonstrate my beingness to you. You then integrate it into your association with how you projected me. Okay, that's what we're doing. That's what this says. I'm then what? I'm giving you the revision of your own mind, not my mind. I'm reflecting back to you your own thought form in the drama that what? You and I previously played out together. Otherwise, why in hell am I here? It must be that this is what you did. And indeed, this is what you did. Wow. You can make this be anything that you want it to be. That's the power of your own mind. But I would suggest that you utilize it to the lesson that we previous to let you have a single problem so that you can revision to what? A single solution. And that's what you want to do. Yet there is a vision which the Holy Spirit sees because the mind of Christ beholds it too. Here is the joining of the world of doubt and shadows made with the intangible. Here is a quiet place within the world made holy by forgiveness and by love. Ready? Here are all contradictions reconciled, for here the journey ends. Experience. I don't know how, I, don't, I can't understand how people could be, have this Course in Miracles and not teach this. Somebody's going to have to tell me. Okay, here the journey ends. Where? In experience. Experience. Unlearned, untaught, unseen is merely there. What you did was remove the obstacles of your own mind. What do you see? The bright, bright light of reality that's always been around you. It's always been there. You're removing your own obstacles, aren't you? Okay, this is our goal, or beyond our goal, it transcends what needs to be accomplished. Our concern is to give you the Christ vision, okay? Christ vision has one law, and this is what you're doing. It does not look upon a body and mistake it for the Son whom God created. It beholds a light beyond the body, an idea beyond what can be touched, a purity undimmed by errors and pitiful mistakes and fearful thoughts of guilt from dreams of sin. It sees no separation, and it looks on everyone, on every circumstance, on all happenings and all events without the slightest fading, fading of the light. You listen to me. This can be taught, and it must be taught by all who would achieve it. It requires but the recognition that the world cannot give anything that even vaguely, faintly can compare with this in value, nor set a goal that does not merely disappear when this has been what? Perceived. Okay, and this you give today. See no one as a body. Greet him as the Son of God he is. Acknowledge that he is one with you in holiness. Wow. Thus are his sins forgiven him. For Christ has vision that has power to overlook them all. In his forgiveness are they gone. Unseen by one, they merely disappear because the vision of the holiness that lies beyond them comes to take their place. One consciousness and all of it disappears. 
one consciousness, one Savior of the world. How many Saviors of the world does it take? One. Who is that? You. Darn right. All right. <clears throat> because the vision of the holiness that lies beyond them comes to take their place. He sees through them. It matters not what form they took, nor how enormous they appeared to be, nor who soon seemed to be hurt by them. They are no more. And all effects they seem to have are gone with them, undone and never to be done. Undone and never to have been done and never to be done again, gone away forever. Thus do you learn to give as you receive, and thus Christ's vision looks on you as well. Now this lesson is not difficult to learn if you remember in your brother you but see yourself. If he be lost in sin, so must you be. If you see light in him, your sins have been forgiven by yourself. Each brother whom you meet today provides another chance to let Christ's vision shine on you and offer you the peace of God. Wow, isn't that something? All right. Thank you so much. So it was lesson 158. So that's really lovely to read to. Um, yeah, so I, we listened to Master Teacher. This, this was a complete story that, like a complete part that fitted so well in where we uh, are active in, in chapter 19. So beyond the body, see your brother without a body. Like in order to, to see him as the Christ, you will have to say not see him as a body and this is so incredible like this is an offering this is an offering to see things completely differently to actually come into a recognition of your brother as you've never had before at least not in the period that you assumed you were a human being like there will be nothing more natural than to experience that and you can totally call that the uh, say um, yeah the circle of atonement that is one word it's like the circle of atonement this is where healing takes place you start to see your brother without like not as a body but as the christ that he is in that we join in an amazing light of recognition of uh, say brightness heavenly brightness and that's the offering continuously in every moment like wholly dedicated to truth is wholly dedicated not to your ideas but to what is uh, allowing this moment to be whole you say coming completely in an unconscious experience of i uh, an all-inclusive i uniting as its main say principle you could say and also it's like not um uh, making any uh, exceptions in in perception it has to be whole and that's so great so it's being offered today in many ways um, yeah I'm uh, thanking you for your presence here today in the uh, voice from heaven and the offering is amazing and so thank you so much for your part in it for your joining in this for this uniting together in this in this celebration this is a celebration in fact a total opportunity to become whole or well, what's wrong with that <laughs> i love it i just love it so thank you so much for your presence and i hope to see you soon thank you